In this video, we're going to continue our examination of the graphs of square root functions. It's just now we're going to focus primarily on looking at the transformations. Now, I introduced this concept in the previous video where we looked at identifying the domain and range of square root functions. And I recommend that you go watch that video first before continuing on so you have a foundation of how the transformations work. And so the general setup for a transformation, you have your function equals a times the square root of x minus h plus k. And we've learned before with transformations, h represents the horizontal translation, k is the vertical. a deals with your orientation, which means is it opening up or down? Is it reflected over the x-axis or not? And the shape, is it increasing faster or is it increasing slower? And so what we need to look at now is just to kind of the shortcuts of horizontal and vertical translations. Now, I always like when I'm given my function to identify the value of A, the value of H, and the value of K, because then I can easily explain these a little bit better than it is, is here, is if I have a positive H value, so when you have X minus H, that means you have a positive h value. You're going to go to the right h units. If you have a negative h value, then that means x plus h. And so you're going to go to the left h units. Since the formula says x minus h, your h is really the opposite of what you see. Formula says plus k, so if you have a positive k value, you're going to go up k units. If you have a minus k, you're going to go down k units. And now we look at orientation. If a is less than zero, which means if a is negative, if a is negative, it reflects over the x-axis. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, which means the size of a. If your coefficient to the radical is a larger number, then it's going to you know, expand vertically. It's going to increase faster. If it's a smaller number between 0 and 1, it's going to slowly increase. It's going to be compressed vertically. So let's apply this with one example. We have here y equals 3 times the square root of x minus 4 plus 2. We want to graph the function and state the domain and range. So I'm going to use the a, h, and k to graph a function, and then I'm going to use my calculator to assist with looking at the table of values. So first thing I do is I look at what's my a, what's my h, and what's my k. So I always write down what the transformation general form is. And so I see a is 3, h is 4, and k is 2. And this allows me to state what my transformation would be. I mean, a is 3. It's a larger number. And so that a of 3 tells me it stretches vertically. And then I look at my h value. I see that h is 4. And so, you know, h is, you know, I have a positive h value, I have a positive movement to the right. And so that means I go four units right. K is a positive two, so I go two units up. And so this is my transformation from the parent function. My graph is going to stretch vertically. It's going to increase faster. I'm going to have it move to the right four units, and I'm going to have it move up two units. And so if I were to take a look, you know, if I'm going to go to the right four units and I'm going to go up two units to the right four units up two, I can see my starting point. And remember I said in the previous video that your starting point, when I use SP, is your HK value. So my starting point is the coordinate for two. You know, what's the domain and what's the range? And again, that's where HK comes in. I mean, domain, I'll use D for domain. 
your x starts at 4. So x is going to be greater than or equal to 4. My range starts at 2. And since a is positive, I know it's going to be pointing upwards, which means y is greater than or equal to 2. And so now I have my domain and I have my range. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at, well, how do I graph it? And I'm going to go ahead and be nice with this. We're just going to rely 100% after you identify you know, your starting point, transformation, the domain, the range. After you get at least this point, just go directly. Just go directly to your calculator. You're in your y equals 3 second x squared x minus 4. As I mentioned in the previous video, if you have the old operating system, close the parentheses. With the new operating system, you hit the right arrow. And then plus 2. Now I could look at the graph, but I want to look at the table. So second table. My calculator says all error, and the reason why is you look at your starting point, it's at 4, and I'm all the way at negative 8 to negative 2. So I'm going to scroll down. Still at error, still at error, but once I hit 4, I see I'm at 2. And so I'm going to grab three nice values from my table of values in my calculator, and I'm going to create a table with those. So my table is going to be my x column, my y column, three nice ones, no decimals, all nice integers. x, y, 4, 2 is my starting point, so that's where my table is going to start. I have 5, 5. And I have 8, 8. And so I'm going to plot those points. At 5, I'm at 5. At 8, I'm at 8. Now remember, this is your starting point, so you don't go beyond this. You start here, and you connect with a curve through the rest of the points, and there's your graph. So here's how we do it. We identify A, H, and K. First step for an overview. We then use that to look at what our transformation would be based off of our values. Our H and K provide us with the starting point on our graph. It also provides us with how to explain our domain and range. What we need to be careful with is you need to make sure with your range, you look at your A value. Since A is positive, it's opening up, so it's greater than or equal to. If A were negative and were opening down, I would have less than or equal to. Then I put this in my calculator. I grabbed the table of values where I had nice integer values for my X and for my Y. I plotted the points and connected with the curve. And it's that simple to describe the transformations of a squared function related to domain and range and use your calculator for a table of values to assist with the graphing.